Now let's talk about retro synthetic analysis of Grignard products. I know that sounds like a mouthful, um, so we're going to learn what retro synthesis is, and we're also going to learn how to apply this analysis to these Grignard products so that we can go from uh, products back to starting material. So recall, um, if you add in a Grignard to an aldehyde, then you get an alcohol. If you add a Grignard to a an ester then you get a ketone as the product. So what is retro, retro? So what is retrosynthesis? It's the reverse synthesis to determine the starting materials used in a reaction to form a particular product. So basically all it means is that I'm starting at the product and then I'm working my way back to the starting materials. All right. Again, recall these two African brothers, Gaka and Geek. Right, granite plus aldehyde or ketone equals an alcohol. So that means if I have I, if the question, so that means if the question is posed, if I start with an alcohol, and I ask what granite reagent uh, and what aldehyde or ketone did I react together to get that alcohol, I should be able to go back and figure that out. The same thing with geek. You know, granite plus an ester equals a ketone. So if I'm given a ketone and I'm and if I'm given a ketone and the question is asked what Grignard and what ester reacted together to give me this ketone I should be able to answer that question based on the retrosynthesis and the method that I'm going to show you here alright so here's a generic example here's an alcohol all we have to remember here is this is that the reverse of addition is elimination and so that's how we go backwards with these examples alright R1 and R2 cannot be hydrogen. I'm, I'm looking to make a granule plus an aldehyde or a ketone since I'm starting with a, with an alcohol in the product. So let's see what happens. So here, if I go from alcohol to intermediate, right? So I go from the alcohol to the tetrahedral intermediate. Reverse. Reverse. For the for this particular example, all I'm doing is removing. Uh, the proton going back to the intermediate from the intermediate then I eliminate right, you see the arrow here coming here and here and then when I eliminate I'm kicking off R1 with a pair of electrons that's here and then I'm reforming my pi bond between oxygen and carbon to give me this aldehyde if I eliminate R2 Right, what I'm doing is reforming my pi bond, kicking off R2 with a pair of electrons to give me this aldehyde where R1 is still attached, and then R2 with a pair of electrons. So the point I'm trying to make is both of these answers are correct. It just depends on which elimination pathway you want to do in order to go in reverse. So again, retrosynthesis is simply the reverse. So I'm starting at the product. and I'm ending at the starting materials and so over here we know that this alcohol is a result of a aldehyde or, or a ketone and a grignard in this case it's aldehyde plus a grignard so R1 is going to have to be where my what R1 is going to have to be derived from a grignard so here's R1 MGBR you can just make it a generic grignard and just use MGBR and then R2 also has to be derived from a granule, so that would be R2 MgBr. So my retrosynthesis, I start with the alcohol, I work backwards to get to the tetrahedral intermediate. From the intermediate, I eliminate to get to my starting carbonyl plus my granule reagent. Let's look at another generic example. Again, R can't be hydrogen. R1, R2, and R3 are just three carbon containing groups. Let's work backwards. I'm moving in reverse. I'm going from alcohol to tetrahedral intermediate. If I eliminate R1, this is what I get. This ketone plus R1, right, with a pair of electrons. If I eliminate R2, notice I'm reforming the pi bond. I'm kicking off R2. I should get this ketone plus R2 with a pair of electrons. If I eliminate R3. Notice I'm reforming my pi bond. I'm kicking off R3 with a pair of electrons. Then I should get this ketone with R3 in a, with a pair of electrons. Okay, so my granule must be derived from R1. 
All right, so that means I just need to take R1, whatever it is, and add magnesium bromide to it so I can form a granule. Same thing here, R2. If I add MGBR, now I have a granule with R2 as my nucleophile. R3 here, if I add MGBR, now I have R3 with the granule as my nucleophile. So let's look at a real example. Here I have a secondary alcohol. It's, it's kind of a rule of thumb. If you have a secondary alcohol and you're asked to derive the granule and the starting material, either aldehyde or ketone, if it's secondary, one of your starting materials is going to be an aldehyde. All right, so I have a, my starting alcohol. So I start here. Remember, I'm not, I cannot remove H in my elimination nor will I remove OH. I can only eliminate CH3 or the ring here. All right. And so here's my model R1, R2H, just like we did in the previous example. So I go from alcohol to tetrahedral intermediate. All right. Same intermediate. I just have two elimination pathways that I can use. If I eliminate CH3, right, notice reforming the pi bond here, kicking off CH3 with a pair of electrons, this is what I get. Where this is my aldehyde, this CH3 left an elimination with a pair of electrons. If I eliminate the ring, the cyclohexane ring, notice I'm reforming the pi bond here. I kick this pair of electrons to this carbon, and this is what I get on this side where I have this carbanion and this aldehyde as a result of that elimination. Okay, what about the granule? Well, if this is CH3 minus, if I just add MGBR then that becomes CH3 MGBR and this is my granule this is my aldehyde same thing down here if I just add MGBR to the carbanion then this is my granule I right, hope that's clear let's look at another real example all right now I have a tertiary alcohol as a rule of thumb if you start with a tertiary alcohol want your your carbonyl is going to be a ketone all right so let's look at again let's start with the alcohol let's reverse, reverse. reverse. so now that we've reversed from the alcohol to the tetrahedral intermediate now the next step is to eliminate considering that we have three groups that could eliminate we have three possible elimination pathways all three of of the uh, starting material that you would get over here are going to be correct doesn't matter which pathway you use so if I eliminate CH3 then this is my ketone this is my CH3 that picked up a pair of electrons here right if I eliminate the cyclohexane ring right this is my anion where the cyclohexane ring picks up a pair of electrons this is my ketone where the CH3 group and the propyl group are still attached to the carbonyl. If I eliminate here, where I not kick off the propyl group and reform the pi bond here, right? This is the propyl anion that I get, and then this is the ketone that I get with the cyclohexane ring and the CH3 still attached to the carbonyl. So I hope that makes some sense. It, it, all of these are correct. If you were to ask this question on an exam and you were asked to give the starting materials for this particular alcohol all three of these would be correct what you have to do the only thing you have to do now is to turn this into a granule and so I'm gonna have that as a pop quiz uh, that you figure out what the granule reagent is for this as well as for this as well as for this all right so what about esters we know that esters plus granules give ketones we remember this uh, mnemonic geek granule plus ester equals ketone so here's a generic example if I have a ketone in the product and I'm asked the question what granule and what ester reacted to give me this ketone right again I go in reverse, reverse. right from the ketone to the tetrahedral intermediate in the tetrahedral intermediate I simply add an OCH3 because I know that the key, if a, the ketone is a is my product, then it had to come from reaction of an ester with a granule. So I add an OCH3 here in my intermediate. 
why am I showing two intermediates? It's the same intermediate, but again, I have two pathways that I could use to eliminate. I could kick off R1 or R2. So if I kicked off R1, then this is my ester here, where R2 is still attached. R1 has picked up a pair of electrons. And if I kick off R2, right, then this is my ester here. And then this R2 picked up a pair of electrons and uh, a negative charge. So again, you have to think in terms of reverse and understand that the reverse of addition is elimination. So uh, this is an elimination to go from here to here. Right? So again, the same steps. Ketone to tetrahedral intermediate. I add OCH3 to the intermediate and then the tetrahedral intermediate to the starting ester plus the grignard. So what's the grignard here? Right? The grignard here will be R1 MgBr. The grignard here will be R2 MgBr. So let's look at a real example. I have a ketone in the product. This is my model. Right? This is my ketone. I can kick off R1 or R2 and get my starter material. So let's go. Let's ketone to tetrahedral intermediate. So let's reverse. All right, I add OCH3 here to form my tetrahedral intermediate. And then from the tetrahedral intermediate, I eliminate. If I eliminate this piece, right, these are my two starting materials. This is my ester. This anion will become my grignard. If I eliminate the CH3 group, right, these are my arrows. I reform the pi bond. I uh, kick off the CH3. And then my two star materials are here, right? The CH3 picks up a pair of electrons, a negative charge. And then the OCH3 here is bonded here, bonded to the carbonyl to form my ester. As always, if you have any questions, you can tweet, you can email, or you can drop by my office. Peace.